Hey guys, John here with another Terrainify tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to paint and finish a basic ruined wall in the overgrowth theme. Alright, so this is the raw print straight from the printer. The first step is to add a little bit of sand, and one reason for this is to give a little bit of texture, but since most of it's actually going to be covered up by flock later on, another purpose is actually to help give a little bit of grip so that it stays on better. So we're going to do this by adding white glue. And I've got my cheap stencil brush. I've added a little bit of water to help it spread. And I'm just going to work around and spread it out. I'm trying to avoid getting a lot of it on the bricks, but it's fine if some of it gets on there. Okay, now that the glue's been applied, just take some sand, and this is uh, ordinary play sand. I've sifted it, so it's uh, mostly fine stuff in here. So I'm just applying the sand directly to it, and I'm shaking off the excess. If you have a big enough container, then you can just basically put the entire piece in at once, let the sand collect, and then shake off the excess. Okay, that's ready to go. I'm going to apply a little bit of sealer, which is just uh, watered down white glue, and then I'm going to stick it in front of a fan to dry, and then it'll be ready for base coating. Alright guys, the next step is to give this piece a black base coat, and to do this I'm just going to be using some cheap craft paint. I'm going to apply it directly to the model. And I'm just going to use a little water to thin the paint a little bit to help it spread better. And a lot of times I don't bother uh, thinning the paint on a palette or anything, I just do exactly what I did, just full strength and then water on the brush, thin it that way. And of course you can use a spray can or an airbrush if you want to speed this process up and make it a little bit easier. And I'm just going to do the entire model, so the base and the rest of the model as well. Just want to give it a nice uniform uh, black base coat and really the only thing to keep in mind is that when you're working when you're painting the sand you don't want to work it too long because the paint and the water will eventually cause the glue to weaken and you might end up uh, rubbing off the sand if that happens but if it does happen then just go back after the paint dries go back and reapply the sand. No big deal. And there we go. Once this is dry, we'll start layering on some more colors. Okay, the base coat is dry, so the next step is to start adding more color. And I'm going to start with some burnt umber on the base. And I'm going to be dry brushing this. And most of the base is going to be covered up with flock by the time we're done. But uh, I'm doing this just to give it a little more natural color underneath. I'm doing a fairly heavy dry brush. And I'm keeping it pretty much to the edge. I'm trying to avoid going all the way up to the stones. Next I'm going to use a medium gray on the stones. And I'm using a different brush because I don't want the brown or the burnt umber to discolor the gray. I'm doing the entire ruin, so meaning the wall and the floor tiles or stones, whatever. 
And again, this is another fairly heavy coat. And you can put this on pretty quickly. Just try to make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies as, as best you can. If you miss any spots and you notice it later, you can touch it up. Use a smaller brush or you can just kind of cheat and make sure you put some flock and other turf and whatnot to cover up those spots. You'll notice as I'm doing this, so I'm, I'm making sure to get the stones that are on the floor and it's inevitable that I'm going to get the gray paint onto the base, onto the sand, and that's fine. It's really not going to show once the flock is applied. Okay, so that's the first layer of gray. Now I'm going to add a highlight layer. And this is just a light gray. And I'm using the same brush as I did with the first layer of gray. You can use a different one if you want, but the colors are close enough that it's not going to have a negative effect on it. And it can actually help blend them a little bit better. And I'm just doing the exact same spots that I did with the previous color. So the entire wall and the floor. But I'm going to go a little bit lighter because this is just a highlight color. And at this point, we're ready to start adding the flock. Okay, I'm going to start by applying some foliage to the walls first. And these represent vines and things like that. So I'm going to take some white glue, full strength, and using my brush, going to apply it in random spots. I'm going to work all the way down to the base as well. So the trick here is to just really be random with this and uh, vary up the thickness and how much glue you put on. You know, put it, make it thick in some areas, use a little bit less in others. All right, after the glue's applied, I'm going to use a couple of materials. And the first one is Super Leaf, dark green Super Leaf from Scenic Express. And I'm just going to shake it on. After you shake it on, shake up the excess. And I'm doing this over a little tub to make recollecting it a little bit easier. When you do the super leaf, the key is to not lay it on so heavily because you want a little bit of the white glue to stay exposed so that the next color will adhere to it. And now I'm going to use some forest floor blend and it's the same process as before just going to shake it on directly and now when i tap off the excess you can see that it's added another layer of color and texture to the piece all right so now i'm going to finish off the base in pretty much the same way i'm going to start by applying a healthy amount of white glue to the base. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water to the brush just to help it flow better. So I'm covering up all the sand. And once again, starting with super leaf.
So the super leaf provides the, uh, the base color and texture. And then the forest floor blend adds on that more color and different bigger variety of texture. While this layer is still wet, I'm just going to add some spots of white glue in random areas. And then I'm going to add a healthy amount of water to really thin those down. And once again with the forest floor blend. Now even though I only added extra glue in certain spots, I am going to apply the forest floor blend to the entire piece, to the entire, the entire base anyway. And the reason for the extra glue is just to help, um, you know, create thicker patches of the forest floor blend. So in some spots, it'll be primarily the, uh, the super leaf that's, that's visible. And then in other spots, you'll see more of the forest floor blend. And there we go. Okay. So at this point, uh, the next thing I'm going to do off camera is apply some, uh, sealer to this, which is just watered down white glue about uh, four to one ratio. And then I'm going to stick it in front of the fan to dry. Now, if you're happy with the way this looks, and I mean, it does look pretty cool so far. It's a, it's a perfectly respectable piece of terrain. So you can stop there if you want and call it good, but I'm going to add a couple of more little touches to just kick it up a notch. All right, guys, just a quick reminder that before you get started on the next part, you want to make sure that the piece is thoroughly dry. Okay, now I'm going to add some super turf and to get started, I'm just going to apply some white glue at full strength directly to the piece. And this is to represent just additional foliage and ground cover. All right, I think that looks good. And then once the glue is applied, just take the super turf and apply it directly. And as you're working, you want to tamp it down just to help it to stick better. I'm going to shake off the excess as I work. Okay, and once again, I'm going to seal it and put it in front of the fan to dry. All right, guys, the last step is to apply some grass tufts. And it's a good idea to make sure that the super turf is completely dry before you do this. And this is a very straightforward and easy process. So I've got a couple of different colors I'm going to use. Just use your tweezers, grab a tuft off the sheet, apply some white glue, and find a spot on the terrain and place it and then gently tamp it down. And that's it. No need to seal it at this point. So once the glue is dry, the piece is finished and ready to go on your table. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and check out tradeify.com to find files, prints, and finished versions of all of our terrain pieces. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.